World, my name is Dukemo. Welcome back to the video. Today we are reacting to Football Wars Mini War Set 2 by Oversimplified. So if you're gonna make sure you like subscribe for more, let's aim for 16 likes in this video. Yeah, 16 likes in this video. Let's do this. Two seconds to name these two countries. What, what, what is that country? I don't even know. You're wrong, unless you got it right. Then good job. They are, of course, Honduras and El Salvador. What is Honduras? The these two countries have in common is being fanatic about football. Okay. Freedom loving patriots, soccer. But do they love it so much they would go to war over it? You bet they would. Dang. No bueno. Dang, it's a war for football or simplify. Many wars too, football war. If you look at these two countries, you might notice one major difference. And that's what? that this one is a lot bigger than this one. However, this one had a larger population than this one. Dang, how is that? And there wasn't enough land for them to live and work on. So they started moving from El Salvador to Honduras in search of land. And by the 1960s, a huge number of illegal immigrants had crossed over the border. Dang, that's a lot of immigrants. Meanwhile, in Honduras, it's 1963, and this guy has just staged a military Oh my coup god, two color guy here. Yeah. And is now the military leader of the country. Boy, he just throwed him like a piece of trash. The peasant unions and other left wing groups. But he's a little insecure about the legitimacy of his. Bro, this is a great thing, though. An election and win. But then the opposing party says, hey man, that election was clearly corrupt and fraudulent. And also, you've been bribed by the rich American banana companies who are taking. Man, what is that? And now our economy is in ruins, and everyone started to get mad at them. Now, if you ever find yourself the barely legitimate military leader of a corrupt Central American country, and you start getting into hot water, here's a bit of advice that has been tried and tested throughout the centuries. Blame something else. So he blamed the Salvadoran immigrants for stealing all the land and all the jobs and ruining Honduras. The immigrants found themselves under attack by the hostile locals. Mom, damn, Daniel, he's beating them like a piece of trash. They wanted all the bananas to themselves. The Honduran government... Bro, what is this banana doing? He's like, man, give me all the banana back. So yeah, it's very great thing though from this government to fight. ...and evicting Salvadoran immigrants who had been living on the land for generations and started sending them back to El Salvador. The Salvadoran elite were furious and protested, citing moral reasons, but in reality, they were just getting a little too crowded. The tensions were about as high as they could be, but then... Oh, oh, whoa. You saw that? There was a reference to Zidane headbutting. Oh, club. Destruction. The World Cup oh, oh, Mexico. Top of their table, so Dang. For them to play against each other in a series of matches. The first match took place in Honduras. The night before the game, Hondurans gathered outside the Salvadoran team's hotel, making noise and taunting them. Damn, why are you doing this? He did the exhausted Salvadorans with a late 90th minute goal. After oh, that, no. a young Salvadoran fan, unable to bear her country's defeat, shot herself. W why? The Salvadoran government glorified the incident. A national hero. And at the next game, fans brought pictures of her to the stadium. Emotions were running high as the next match took place in El Salvador. And this time, the tables were turned. The Hondurans had to endure a sleepless night in their hotel. And the next Damn, who's in the, the car? Game, instead of the Honduran flag, the Salvadorans raised a dirty rag. So great job at reducing tension. El Salvador won decisively over the exhausted Hondurans. While spectators battled in the stands, Team Honduras fled... Dang, that's a big AF roar. reportedly told his players that they were lucky they lost. In response to the defeat, Hondurans began terrorizing the Salvadoran settlers even more. In some cases, were Dang, he's, bro, the what is even happening here? ...began fleeing back to El Salvador. The final game in Mexico would decide who went to the World Cup. It was close, but El Salvador came out victorious, knocking Honduras out of the tournament. The atmosphere is riotous. Literally, and back in Honduras, attack Holy crap, it turned into a freaking war. It's too much for El Salvador to bear. With its people under attack and an unmanageable refugee crisis on its hands, El Salvador severed all diplomatic ties with Honduras and declared war. A war. The war is also known as the 100 Hours War because that's how long it lasted, making it one of the shortest wars in history. Dang, now we go to the day one. By carrying out air raids on strategic locations within Honduras, including Concontin International Airport, which prevented the Honduran Air Force from getting into the sky. Man, look at that airplane. Army, they began an invasion along two major roads. Okay. Literally going to destroy the place, but that's bigger. Rapid, and they were quickly approaching the Honduran capital. Then the organization of American states met in a bit of a panic and unanimously agreed that war between El Salvador and Honduras was a bad thing and probably shouldn't continue. So they went to El Salvador and said, can you please stop invading? And El Salvador declared, not until they stop being jerks. And Dang, boy. The Honduran Air Force finally got into the sky, and with aid from neighboring Nicaragua, they successfully carried Nicaragua. out Salvadoran air bases and oil facilities, crippling the Salvadoran supply line and stopping their advance dead. 
Day four, it's gonna be it. Caught in a bit of a stalemate, the situation was no longer advantageous to El Salvador. So when the Organization of American States once again asked them to stop and agreed to ensure the safety of the Salvadoran immigrants, El Salvador relented and a ceasefire was organized on the 18th of July. Then the OAS said, "Can you now please withdraw your troops from Honduras? No, please, no, please, no, no please, please no. no. Do it or we'll sanction you." Damn! Now you have to do it. You know what? Just for you, I'll do it. So oh. El Salvador pulled its troops out of Honduras on the 2nd of August, and with casualties in the thousands, the war was over. The economies of both nations were damaged by the war, and El Salvador didn't have the capability to take care of all the returning immigrants, a crisis that eventually helped cause the civil war. The war left behind land and border disputes, some of which are still a cause of tension to this day. El Salvador went on to play in the World Cup, but lost every match they played and didn't make it past the Dang, game. they got ribbed. Nobody achieved anything, and there were no winners. Except for this guy. Damn, Banana, you doing a lot of things here, Banana. He's like, yeah, boy, I did it. Bro, that's a pretty good video here. Yeah, it was better, Mike. Your mic was really pretty good. That's what this is, dudes. Have a good day. Bye-bye.